Hey friends, how are you? Hope you're well and you've had a good week. Um, mine has been, it's been okay, I have to say, it has been okay, but um, I don't know if you saw on my Discord, but I got a stonking migraine last Saturday. Uh, and I just wasn't good Saturday, Saturday afternoon, all Saturday night, Sunday, and even it took until sort of Monday evening for it to actually disappear. Um, so it's, it's left me quite drained, I have to say. Uh, but no, it was fine. One good thing that did come out of it, I didn't spend a lot, I haven't spent a lot of time on my on my computer this week because I just I can't. It's my head just gets sore, it doesn't allow it. So that's kind of I, if I haven't been on Discord or you know Instagram and stuff like that, that's why because I just my my, my eyes won't allow it. Um, and also I haven't been on. YouTube or watching YouTube videos. I know there are some people that I need to sort of watch their videos from the February's kind of cozy, cozy land uh, challenge. I actually finished the whole board, but I just haven't been able to watch the other channels. But I will get round to it. Please, I'm not being rude or anything. I will get round to going to watch the other channels and leaving a comment, etc. Um, but it's just this week has just not been that week to do it. Uh, so I'm also kind of behind on reading reviews of my writing reviews for my Goodreads and stuff. So it's just like, uh, the one thing that I did do this week though was, as I say, Monday I was still feeling pretty crud. But what I needed to do was write some embroidery threads onto the little bobbins that you get to keep them on, um, that you can write what number they are on it, etc. So right, I'll try doing that because it's not going to take up a lot. And I was in the middle of listening to, or, or the, I would say a third of the way through an audiobook. I spent all of Thursday, all of Monday listening to to the audiobook. So, superb. But let's get into what reading I have managed to do this week. Even though I've had a, you know, a migraine, I managed to get some reading done, which was great. And which I consult said Oracle. Um, it's very important this book. So what have I read this week? Ah, that's right. Okay, this I have actually I read what well, I finished one, and I've read three complete. So that's not too bad. So the first one I finished was I finished same time next Christmas by Christine Rimmer. This is part of her um what series is it? The Bravos of Valentine Bay series. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I gave this one. What did I give this one? Four out of five. Sorry, I, my eyes drag into something else. Gave a four out of five. So, we meet Matthias, uh, Matthias Bravo, and he is coming to spend Christmas at a cabin that he inherited from his uncle. Matthias is an ex-soldier, has obviously suffering from, has been suffering from PTSD, and still, I think, occasionally does, and needs to spend time alone at times. So. His uncle has gave him this cabin. He arrives at the cabin to discover that the lights are on, there's smoke coming out the chimney, and he's like, wait a minute, who's broken in? And he discovers a young lady there who is obviously been who's obviously there to dry off because she's in her under undergarments, shall we say, beside a roaring fire. But he goes in kind of all guns blazing with a gun going, who are you? How did you get in? Blah, blah, blah. And they eventually, you know, discover why, she, you know, that, yeah, she has broken in, the reason she's broken in. But she also discovers that Matthias is, he's sweating, he's, he's really not well. And she just, she notices a bandage on his leg and she's like, what's wrong with you? And she discovers that he, while he was hacking down his Christmas tree, he has managed to cut his leg quite badly. Um, luckily, she was brought up on a farm. She knows about stitching up animals, etc. So she basically cleans his wound, etc. Um, stitches it he has an emergency first aid kit in the cabin she manages to give him some pain meds and eggs etc but he's also been suffering you know he will he wasn't well before he went to cut down the tree he had a cold but it's obviously manifested into more um so basically she stays to um 
nursing through the holidays and so this starts this a kind of relationship and they agree to me every Christmas Eve or every is it Christmas Eve or 20 or 30 December every year they meet so we get so sort of, say three or four consecutive Christmases and they're not allowed to contact each other throughout the year it has to be at Christmas and one Christmas they arrive, she arrives, he arrives and things are maybe not great and they discover why and but they leave it open that next Christmas and it's the story of will they get together, will they not get together. It was really well written. I loved it. I really did enjoy it. I thought, you know, the characterization. I thought, part of me liked this idea of like just want, you weren't allowed to contact during the, the year but then I thought, well, if something major happens, you know, what you need... Do they not want the support of each other? So, yes, I'm looking forward to reading. I've got another one of this series, but it's like further on in the series. So I'm really wanting to get more of this one just to sort of see if we get more of this story or whether they are just, sort of, shall we say, individual stories. Which, But no, I thoroughly enjoyed that one. I then, yes, my my the book that I read last, or listened to last Monday was Heartache Falls by Emily March. This is the third in the Serenity Spring series, or Eternity Spring series. Oh, it was so nice. So, I'm now trying to work out what who is who was in it, because I've already started listening to the next one. Oh my goodness. Oh, Ali. So we meet, Ali Hazelwood we have met in, or Timberlake, sorry, we have met in previous books. She comes to Eternity Springs for break, for holidays and she her husband is a federal is a is a judge and he gets really really involved in all the cases that he has to proceed o preside over etc to the detriment of his family um, and to basically to the detriment of Ali. Their kids are grown up, um, their oldest daughter is off at Vanderbilt University and he's got two, he's got, they've got two sons um, and Ali is sort of lost and now that the children have fled the nest basically what is she going to do and she makes she has a sort of not an argument with her husband but things are really not working and she eventually says right I'm off to Eternity Springs um Celeste has offered me a job um getting the, the Bristlecone Cafe back to being able to run and so she goes she goes to Eternity Springs confesses all to or she doesn't confess though. No. She's having a, a do for now, I think it's Paige because she has a new exhibition and she's a she has a do for Paige at the house and she confesses all at that point to um Celeste. And Celeste's like, Yeah, come on, just come. You can come and stay. You can we'll do up the bristle cone and various things. So it's basically the story of Ali in Eternity Springs with sort of her husband realising, well, wait a minute. Why is she doing this? And various things happen throughout her time there that maybe make them both reevaluate what they want and how they want to live, etc. Um, it was really well done. Uh, I love Celeste as a character. I actually I love a lot of the characters from from this series. I liked seeing the fact that Ali becomes involved with the with the community, um, and her friendships with Paige and Nicole and Celeste and the others start and Sarah start to really really botch. They really do start to you know become stronger bonded, and I just really really enjoyed it. I gave that one five out of five. And as I say, I'm listening to the next one at the moment. So I then read It's a Christmas Thing by Janet Daly. This is the second book in the Christmas Tree Farm series. Oh, I love this book. This was another five star for me. So 
we met at the in the first book we've met the three male three main male characters okay but we don't know a lot about rush who is the vet the veterinarian um and we learn more about him in this book so he gets a call rush gets a call one day from his ex-wife's housekeepers um and also they kind of look after the wee girl that he thought was his but it was not his um the wife was wife is just really she wasn't very nice to him about it anyway um the wife and the husband have gone off for christmas wait to hear this for christmas okay on a cruise they have left their four-year-old daughter with the housekeepers who the hell does that so that did not that did not get me go i was very very annoyed at this um so the housekeepers are phoning because they need someone to look after the wee girl as the lady um her father has had a stroke and is really not well so rush agrees yeah i'll take um clara and or is it, her name was clara they've changed or claire i can never they yeah claire um so he says yes i'll take her and both connor and oh what, tanner say yeah that's fine no problem we'll we'll work things out and so rush goes off to meet um the couple and get his daughter and while he's away tanner and connor realize well they can't put the wee girl into her, into the room that her dad sleeps in because there's not space and really they think that for you you know she needs some some space for herself so they pitch a tent in the sitting room and they put a really nice wee sort of sleeping bed into it a sleeping bag and a, a, a like a a light and everything and they make it so cozy for her which i just thought was so sweet and she absolutely adores this you know this is this she is just like over the moon with this wee sleeping nook for her and she basically she winds the boys around her little finger you know this kid has got every man in the town will do anything for her you know because she is just that cute and there's one bit where he says to her the first, the first morning right okay you get up and get dressed and we'll do and she comes out in this fairy princess costume and he's like when it, have you got anything else yes come and see i packed my case myself at which boy you can see the warning bells going off in his in rush's head and yes, she's bought her fairy, her fa her princess costume. She brought a fairy costume, a tiara, sparkly sandals, um, a unicorn onesie, and that's it. Okay, no underwear, nothing. So he decides that, like, okay, they're, they're, obviously we need clothes. And Tanner says, "I'll get Maggie to do it because Rush had a full day of." Um, of veterinary stuff so maggie's like well i can't do it but i know who could do it so she asks um now what's the woman's name oh gosh why do why is her name why is her name jumping on me tracy she asks tracy who's the local um I think she's a judge as well um if she will take claire shopping so tracy agree sort of sort of reluctantly agrees and and rush has had a has had a like, he really likes tracy he doesn't really know very much about her but he's met he's seen her a couple of times and he really likes her so we have that going on and we have tracy trying not to fall for rush's charms and trying not to be um wound round by little claire but that ain't gonna happen and tracy also finds a pregnant cat 
on her doorstep and she takes her in and so Rush gets involved with helping her with the in some ways with the with the kittens. Claire is in, in absolute love with the kittens. Especially one and wants one for her Christmas, but there are various things that maybe preclude that. Also Rush is like would would love to have visiting rights with Claire, but is that gonna happen? How can that happen? So there is all of this going on. And there's the build up to Christmas. It was delightful. I loved this book. The characters were just so good. The way it was written. Janet Daly just winds the story up and you know, you get snippets about the other characters' lives, etc. Oh so good. I'm looking forward to the rest of this series. Um and unfortunately I discovered that Janet Daly has passed away. Um, so I was like, oh no. So I am just I'm glad that she's got a huge backlist because I've got so much more to read, which is fantastic. Um, but no, really, really enjoyed that one. I then read on my Kindle Summer at the Santorini Bookshop by Eliz uh, Rebecca Raisin. Now this one should have been right up my alley. Okay, this one should have been everything I could want in a book. But it got three and a half out of five. Boom. Um, I think part of the problem was I came off I came off reading this from two five stars and I think that possibly I maybe had a carryover as to how good those books were and I don't I try not to compare books to each other but this one sort of fell flat for me so do you know what I'm even blanking on the, the, char the main character's name Excuse me one minute, actually. Let's see if I can get it back. Oh, this is ridiculous. Where is that book? Talk amongst yourselves a minute, guys. Is it Lucy? What makes me think it's Lucy? Evie, sorry. Okay, so we meet Evie, and Evie has come over to. She, Evie is has a job as a a book scout for a Hollywood um, company, uh, for a film company, and she loves her job. She absolutely adores her job. But the main, the man who's her boss leaves, and in his place, this loudmouth doofus arrives. And within two days he has sacked Evie because romance books are not where it's at. It's action-packed um, graphic novels that they need to be looking at. So he gives her the heavy hobby. And so her mother sees this as an opportunity to send Evie to Santorini because her grandmother is out there. And Mummy is worried because she doesn't think things are right with Granny. And that Granny really needs somebody to look after her. Or either that get her to make the move back to the USA. Granny's a fabby character. Granny is 82, 83. Has gone through men. Well, the one thing I don't like. Well, I'll explain more. This woman has got so much spunk and energy. And if I have anything of her energy and spunk when I am 82. If I get to 82. I am going to be one happy bunny. Um, So Evie goes... And she arrives to find her mother, her grandmother in the throes of a very big argument with this gorgeous looking man. So she kind of, she manages to break it up and she gets her grandmother like, what's going on? So her grandmother tells her this story about the guy Georgius, his grandfather Yanis is wanting the rent money but at the moment granny doesn't have the rent money and they're threatening to evict her um but she wants she's granny's wanting this her bookshop she's opening this second part of her bookshop to be a night library with jazz and like all her books that she's collected throughout her life 
that people can come in and read and borrow and um there's a bar and i mean the bookshop itself sounded so good you know it's like one of these bookshops that you it's like never ending and it's like you really want to go there so granny persuades evie that to help her run the bookshop and to um <coughs> to help organize the opening of the the midnight library bit and Evie agrees, but Granny also persuades her to fake date Georgius to find out what Yanis is up to. Okay, so there was that part of it. That bit didn't quite sit totally with me. Um, we also find out that Granny's newest husband, number 12, I think, has disappeared. Now, Granny has got all of these stories about all of her ex-husbands all being, all dying in various circumstances. And, you know, that kind of got a bit, I'm like, oh, come on, seriously? So I found that a bit annoying. I really liked, so Evie and George's going out on their fake, on, their, on like, what is that, a fake date? But they actually begin to get on really well and he starts to bring her out of her shell. She also becomes friends <clears throat> with a, a lady called Roxy who comes into the, the bookshop. And Roxy is a PR person. So they, engage, they, they ask Roxy to help them organise the PR for the, for the upcoming, upcoming launch. And then we discover that Georgius is, into, is a book editor and he manages to get one of his <coughs> one of the, a lady that he's previously edited for who's really a big a lady called Lucy to come and um sort of open the whole library a bit so with all of this going on and we've got granny's being very secretive about things i'm like what the heck is going on um and then Mummy and Lucy's sister Posey come over to discover what's going on because Mummy is a, a lawyer and she's been digging into things and she's discovered that um, Granny's husband has basically run off with all Granny's money. Um, and so Mum's worried that Gran's got no money to her name and then discovers that a guy called Billy the Knuckle, who is a mafiosa from from Italy, is coming to visit Granny. But what they what they eventually find out is like like Billy and Granny are friends, and basically Granny engaged Billy to go and get her money back. So we had all of this going on, which was it was it was okay, but I find it far fetched. I really did. I did find it far fetched. And then what sort of really sort of got me was that George's um, admits to Evie that he was fake dating her on his on, on his grandfather's behalf, and she gets really affronted by this. And I'm like, wait a minute, you were fake dating him for your granny. But then Granny and George's his grandfather as well, they admit that basically they set the two of them up to fake date, each, fake, fake date each other because they actually want them to get together. So I'm not a fan of the fake dating trope I have to say it just doesn't sit well with me. Um, so a book that had promise for me just kind of fell flat and as I say, I gave it three and a half, it was all right, but I'm not raving about it, which is a shame, um, but that's the way it goes. So what am I reading at the moment I hear you cry? Well, I'm listening to Lover's Leap, which is book five, I think, or book four. I think book four of the Eternity Springs series. I'm also reading, what's it called? Um, 
book two of a Whiskers and Words mystery book. Um, now, what's this one? I'll tell you the title in a minute. She says, Tabby, Tabby or not Tabby. So that's what I'm reading tonight, and I'm really enjoying it. So we're back it with, oh gosh, I'm really blanking on names here, guys. Lou. And Lou is still running the bookshop. She still has the cat adoption scheme going. And we're beginning to learn more about the people who are coming into the shop and who are adopting the, t the cats. There's been a, there's been a, a murder or it looks like a suicide, but she thinks it's a murder. So she and her friend are um, trying to persuade Evan, the, the policeman, that the, it is murder and not anything else. So I'm really enjoying it. I should finish that one today, which will be fine. Um, Lover's Leap, I'll probably not finish till later on in the week, I think. So I do have a book haul, yes. Now, I had ordered these books so way back in February because these are the my these are the three the next three books I want to read for my series about series challenge. I've realised that I've actually been reading books that are next in series that aren't on my my SAS list, but that's fine. I can I will work all of that out throughout the year and decide which ones you know I will can tell you at the end of the year what SAS books I've been reading. So my next one for Icicle Falls is The Lodge on Holly Road by Sheila Roberts. I am really looking forward to this one. Um, I like Icicle Falls. Um, my next one is uh, to do with Hope Springs. I think it's Hope Springs anyway. Hope's Crossing. And that is Sweet Laurel Falls by Rianne Thane. And then my next one is the next book on the Buckhorn Montana series and that's before Buckhorn and the great thing about this is it has at the at the end of the book you have Out of the Blue which is a, f a slight fill in for I think I need to read Out of the Blue first before I read before Buckhorn but I'm really really looking forward to all three of those books um so they're they're on my pile to be read and then Last Friday I went into Watterson's because I was picking up a book. Or was I picking up a book? No, I wasn't picking up a book. I just went in because we got in for lunch. And I was wanting to order some books. That's what I was doing. And I set one of the, the men that works there, Graham, he's really good, really nice. Actually, the whole staff at that Watterson's are fantastic. And... I got talking to him and I was sort of like, you know, I would quite like to branch out even more into some fantasy and explain what I'd read and what I liked and explain the ones that I tried that I didn't like. And he's like, yeah, I'll go and make a, a pile and you can just choose what you want. So I chose one that he had chosen. He gave me. <laughs> and then they had put the second book in a series out and the lady was, that, was, that helped me she said, oh, that, the first one we don't have, but we can order for you. Um, and I sort of read the synopsis and the, the, about it and thought, yeah, I'd really like to try that one. So she went, right, okay, I'll order it and we'll get it in. So it, went, it was in and I went in on Friday with mum. Actually, mum and I went out on Friday again. That's why this video is being done on a sa Sunday. Um, because uh, I was out with mum uh, for Friday. I was tired when I came back. She managed to do more driving this weekend. It was fantastic. She drove part of the way in and then drove all the way back. She discovered where the accelerator was, guys. At one point, I was like, what tra What, what speed is my mother travelling at? I'm like, oh, right, she's 70. Mum's like, what? I'm like, you're driving at 70. <gasps> so, but no, she, she thoroughly enjoyed it. So anyway, back to the story, I digressed. I do tangents, folks. So I went in and picked up the book and I'll show you the other book I got. So I got The Way of Shadows by Brent Weeks. So, I'm looking. This is an assassin. By the looks of it, yeah. So I'm. I've been told it sounds really good, and then the one I got last Friday was the Innocent Mage by Karen Miller. Um. 
so again I don't know if he's an assassin type person but that I think these could be quite good so that's kind of what I've been reading and what I am what I've my little book haul um somebody asked me in my uh video about the page count challenge how uh, I'd forgotten to update your mum and dad on their reading mum finished the Harlan Coben she really really enjoyed it she said it was really interesting because it was to do part of it was to do with different police procedures in different countries so she actually enjoyed reading about that she quite enjoyed that um dad finished Anthrax Island about the island of Grunyard he didn't really enjoy it he found he said it was too confusing too much plot going in different directions that he just didn't really enjoy that um at all so that's I've, I've caught you up on that so um yesterday I the reason I didn't do this video either on Saturday was I was out for lunch with a friend a friend came came to see me and went out for lunch and that was really really nice which is a fun just chatting and catching up which was really nice and then came home watched a bit of rugby and then sort of started to catch up on the world athletics championships so the indoor athletics championships that are being held in glasgow we record it all and then we video through the chit we fast forward through all the chit chat can't stand the chit chat just give us the action all i want is the action i don't need all this in-depth analysis etc no no so that you know they start a program and you have like 40 minutes of flip and chat it's like come on so we just sit and fast forward so my plans for today are to video this or i uh, video this i am um, i'll maybe video my um my february stats uh video as well do that uh watch some athletics i have some more um when i was in on friday i was picking up some more threads from hobbycraft for a, a cross stitch project and I got some more bobbins, so I might sit and wind on some bo some thread onto bobbins and put my 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 um my audio book in. Uh, what else have I done this week? Oh, I, I was out with my other half, which was nice. Went out for coffee, which was lovely. We had a nice afternoon, and sort of we're discussing what we're going to do with regards to possibly trying to go abroad again at Christmas for a market this year, um, or because we didn't manage last year's for various reasons um so kind of we're discussing that as well so but that's it for this video friends gosh i've, I've been rambling for 30 odd minutes Oof. Hey, well that's the way it goes anyway i hope you've enjoyed this video please let me know down in the comments what have you been reading this week and this weekend i'd love to know what have you been doing this weekend come come chat with me in the comments um but that's it for this video hope you've enjoyed as i say um and i've I will see you in my next video, but until then, I think I was cut off. I think I I, I tapped the trackpad thing. So anyway, until my next video, friends, stay safe, happy reading. Bye.